Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. Really a neat study here. Um, not going to be real high detail or anything else. Um, I know Brother Jacob Thompson came out with a video a while back about uh, you know the glory of the Lord, and um, and we talked about it a little bit before he you know made that video, and uh, and you know he's told me he's found some more references and things, and I've been doing some of my own study on it, and uh, it is fascinating. I'm actually going to do a very very highly detailed study coming up in the future, part of a new series of videos, biblical truth and doctrine studies. And uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of my sermons, I'm just trying to get stuff out there and get information out there. And I've been not having time to really get into the real intricate detail studies. Um, but the biblical truth and doctrine studies coming up are going to be extremely high detail. And so I want to do one on every reference to uh, where Jesus Christ is being glorified. Um, pretty interesting thing. And I was starting the study and I was looking through it because we actually read this one verse. And I thought, I wonder how many times the Bible says that. I'd like to know some things here about this. And it's what the Lord showed me is pretty amazing. Again, proving that Jesus Christ is wholly, completely God. He is the Father. He is the Son. He is the Holy Spirit. Just one God. Um, he is the Lord of glory. Okay? Not the Lords of glory or something like that. Uh, you know, or one of the Lord of glories or something like this. Uh, no, He is the Lord. Lord of glory. I'm going to show you here real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. All praise goes to Jesus Christ for this study. I'll tell you that right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 through 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Who was crucified on the cross? Jesus. He's the Lord of glory. Okay. Now we're going to go to Acts chapter 7. Show you an interesting tie in here. Acts chapter 7. Stephen uh, on trial here speaking to the wicked philosophers of his day, the Bible correctors and things like that. Acts chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory hmm, appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharan, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Now the interesting thing about that is, he is quoting, he's referring back to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, where God the Father speaks to Abraham. Hmm. Then he calls him the God of glory. And it, yet the Lord of glory died on the cross. You say, well, what's well, different? It's different. There's a God of glory and there's a Lord of glory. <laughs> Please. Let me show you the tie-in. James chapter 2. Show you another one that really proves who the Lord of glory is. James chapter 2, verse 1. You know, and again, I'd like to just ask the Trinitarians, why do you get so anxious to try and prove that the Lord of glory and the God of glory are two separate beings? Or two separate persons? Well, it's God the Father in the Old Testament, so that's the God of glory. And then in the New Testament, you have Jesus, the Lord of glory. They're not the same. They're not the same. Why are you so upset about somebody like myself saying that they're the same? Why is it that you have to get these radical videos making these videos, Jesus is not God the Father. Ugh, like it's some kind of a horrible, oh, how dare you even say it? Why? Why? Why are you so afraid to give that much glory to Jesus Christ? James chapter 2, verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Is it clear who the Lord of glory is? Yeah. Show you an interesting tie in here. Luke chapter 17. I just I was writing some stuff down here quick. And uh, this is another good one in re reference to who Jesus Christ is. Luke chapter 17. 
Verse 11, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They knew who he was. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that, that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Well, who was he glorifying there? Verse 16, And fell down on his face at his feet. Hmm, interesting. He's glorifying God, and he fell down at his feet. Who was standing there? Jesus. And like I said, we're going to go through all the scriptures on the thing of the glory of the Lord and why we should glorify Jesus Christ, because he is the Lord of glory. Verse 16, And fell down on his face at his feet, which we read earlier, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where are there, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. He returned to give glory to God. Why? Because the God of glory was standing there right in front of him. Jesus is the God of glory. He is the Lord of glory. It's the same being. There's one God. There's one Lord. You say, oh, well, you didn't really prove your point. Now I got you. Okay? You Trinitarians out there that say there's no scripture proving that the, that the Father is the soul and Jesus is the body and things. Now I'm going to get you. Got a real good one here for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You want real good proof of what I've been preaching and teaching? Glorifying my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you seem to have a problem with? You wicked Trinitarians out there? You don't like Jesus being glorified? I got to just kind of keep him down a lower level there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, like Trinitarianism, not walking in craftiness, like Trinitarians, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, <laughs> like Trinitarians, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Stay tuned. It gets even worse for the Trinitarians. Verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The light and the knowledge of the, the, the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ? He's the image of God? Hmm. And I did a whole Trinity Exposed thing on this. Um, the Trinitarians, the, the Papist Trinitarians, have literally tried to say that that when you see Jesus, you see God, meaning the, the, the image of God, that means that they're identical twins. I remember Stephen Anderson, the little idiot that he is, he actually came out with one of these little, you know, Trinity moments. Trinity moments. Hello, this is Pastor Stephen Anderson, Faith of Lord Baptist Church, Tempe, Arizona. You know, every single video he starts out that way. He's a nut. But, you know, he's, he's a fake, he's a fraud, but another issue. Isn't that amazing? They'll come out and they'll actually, they have to twist the scriptures. They have to handle the word of God deceitfully. And say, when it says that Jesus is the image of God, the glory of God shines through the face of Jesus Christ. They'll say, well, that's not the soul coming through the flesh, the body of God. Um, it just means that they're identical twins. Uh, no, Jesus is the Lord of glory. He is the God of glory. He is almighty God. So that's going to be it. Not a real big study. Like I said, I'm going to be coming out with a really, uh, in the future, I'm going to be coming out with very detailed studies, um, going through multiple scriptures. I'm going to be uh, getting a lot of things done in terms of 
uh, more references to books and things like that. I'm going to be doing a lot more detailed studies in the future. And um, I'm going to keep you know, wrecking these heresies out there with the Lord's help. Um, I want to magnify Jesus Christ. I want to exalt Him to His rightful place that He is. He is Almighty God. He is the Lord of glory. He saved me, a dirty, wretched sinner. I'm going to bring Him glory. You don't want to do that? Well, uh, I suggest you get saved because you're obviously lost. If you don't want to see Jesus Christ glorified, you're lost. It's just that simple. So that is going to be it, and we'll see you in the next study.